Welcome. Salutations and greetings. And vice versa, too. Indeed. We're Katie Lee and Will Ryan. She's the one, I'm the other. And now, literally several people know us for Tell You Later. Later. And don't forget to like and subscribe to their channel. When I'm not busy imitating Will Ryan, I watch Tell You Later. Don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget. Don't forget to subscribe. Please subscribe. And do not fail to hit the subscribe button. And while you're at it, hit like. Right now. Hit it! We haven't got a title song for this show, so we're singing this thing instead. Okay. It's really just a substitute, nonetheless, the melody may stay in your head. Oh, I hope so. Cause it's a tune. It's a tune. You'll love to croon. You'll love to croon. Ah, but there's one thing you should know. We have to confess we do not possess a title song for this show. Ain't it peculiar? Believe it or not, we haven't got a title song for this show. Hello, and welcome to Tell You Later. Hey, I'm, I'm Steve. Katie Lee. <laughs> I'm Steve. I'm Will. And, I'm and vice versa. No. This is Will Ryan. This is Steve O'Donnell. I'm Katie Lee, sitting in the back seat. All right, she insists on... Uh, I'm a back seat driver yes, today. Yes, you are. Because, because it looks more even that way. It does? Yeah. Well, could you could you move up? Into the uh, see there okay. Look great. at our nice there. teeth. Now we're two dimensional. You know what my father used to say? Smile, show them your teeth. I paid two thousand dollars for them. Show them, <laughs> give them, show them your smile. <laughs> wow. Yes, my father was very subtle. And then, <laughs> little did he know you'd go into voiceover work. <laughs> yeah, right. that's true. What a waste. Now I take my glasses off when we when we tape because I notice that it has these reflections and because of our oh. our. Or lighting that. Maybe it gives me a sort of sinister professor quality, like Ooh. a sort of Peter Lorre uh, mad scientist. Something. Ah. I like the scientist aspect. Ooh. In fact, if I can get them to where they're reflected most completely. just So they can't oh, yeah. see you at all? <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's better. That's a little better. Yeah. Ooh. <laughs> when hey, you're, when you're a mad scientist, you, you tend to get chapped hands because you're always like rubbing right. your hands together. With... Let me hear your mad scientist laugh. <laughs> Hear at least, you know, at least they're jovial. <laughs> you want to hear mine? Yeah. Okay. I don't know. Mad scientist? Yeah, Let me see. mad okay. scientist. <laughs> oh. It wouldn't be Billy Bletcher, which is more... <laughs> I guess it could. Ooh. But he's not a scientist, really. <laughs> uh, I think it'd be... It'd be uh, Ooh, wow. A good one. That's the scariest. Or it might be scary to sort of go counterintuitive and give them a, a, a girlish giggle. And now I am going to incinerate both of you. <laughs> <laughs> I think that works pretty well, actually. Uh, yeah, that's, and that's, that's, that's good. That is good. why you write jokes, right? Yes. Yeah. Joke, yeah. Oh, tell me, it, yes? In a previous episode, we were uh, talking about um, Bob Dylan, mm -hmm. and I wanted to share an observation of mine. It's kind of philosophical hmm. but uh, do i have to think hard to follow this no okay, it's no. The, but there will be some thinking afterwards okay bob dylan is a noble laureate or nobel laureate perhaps he's also a noble laureate oh winner of a nobel prize um but in all honesty when he asks mr tambourine man play a song for me how good a song does he expect to hear on a tambourine? <laughs> wow. Good point. So good point. Th that's a that's a that's not even a hypothetical question, is it? No. Wait, where's my whoops. You know, I, another observation I'd like to make about Bob Dylan. Triangle? Is who wrote this? What? Do -do -do. Answer, my friend. It's blowing in the wind. It's going to say Bob Dylan, or are you going to say, well, that's actually a melody? He's it's a public domain melody. Oh, yeah. oh, oh. I was thinking hypothetical well, that's like Woody triangle. Guthrie yeah, but at least Woody Guthrie said, 
Uh, I want this song to be in the public domain. It's called This Land is Your Land, and I want this song to be in the public domain. Well, I think we have to I let Nobel, Nobel laureate Bob Dylan off the hook on this one, because he wrote a lot of great... Wait, did uh, he you did. say he, oh, But he, he did steal other that? melodies. The uh, Bob Dylan's dream is nothing but to Lord Franklin. Yeah. Well, riding on a train going west, I fell asleep for to take my rest. I dreamed mm-hmm. a dream that made me sad. Is he allowed to sing it on Yes. Not? It's, a, it's, it's like a 200-year-old yeah. song yeah. Oh. concerning Lord Franklin. Well, I'm not as old as you, so I don't know those songs. Well, Yeah, but you've heard of the Peloponnesian War. Well, yes, I have, but I wasn't there like you. Well, <laughs> 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 can you speak wow. Peloponnesian? Um, I, oh, I know. I think oh, I no. can speak it as well as any living Peloponnesian. Okay, all right. Steve, fine. what about you? Well, I sometimes like to remark uh, here in Los Angeles that there's a neighborhood called uh, uh, Elysian Park. That's right. And, Near uh, USC. But, yes, but there's almost no Elysian families living there anymore. Oh, They've because all moved they all to moved, the moved out. Yeah. They moved and away. I lived in the back, I li- currently uh, legally live in the backyard of, uh, uh, what's it called, uh, Mount Olympus. Did you know? Oh, that? yeah, Mount Olympus. Part of uh, Los Angeles. That's where Mount the Olympus. demigods stay, the yes, backyard, right, right. when they get elevated so, to so full godhood. I'm hoping Gail Godot or Gadot moves in, you know, uh, <laughs> next door or something. You know who lives next door to me now? Um, um, oh, who? Uh, uh, I shouldn't uh, talk uh, George Papard. <laughs> Everybody's gonna sadly no, <laughs> and Margaret. <laughs> no, that would be fun too. No, a very, 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 very nice guy who was uh, uh, he was a television star, and now he's a television star in movies on television, and and just a terrific uh, actor. But I, I probably shouldn't mention his name. Well, but, maybe you, you know. Tell I always us thought. Later. When, I always <laughs> thought when I grew up, you know, like when I was in Willie on Filio. When I grow up, I'm gonna have my announcer live next door. You know, like like in George Burns, you know, <laughs> right? Or, or Jack with, Benny? Yeah, with right, him. right. Seemed to live next door. Uh, well, wait although, a second. Wait a second. Weren't you his announcer when he was in Wellio and Filio? Didn't it, you? Yes, tell it me made that? no sense at all because Will's speaking voice is so much more mellifluous. What would you say? I beg to differ. I say you have a great lilt to your voice. I. I I tried to do, uh, you know, uh, humorous uh, framings for their 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 like, songs. Like like what? Uh, well, if it was um, a St. Patrick's Day show, I would be Brendan Bayamith, the world's tallest leprechaun. That's right. That's and, right. Uh, or if yeah. it was, I did a. Did you uh, wear costumes? Sometimes, oh, yes. Yeah. Okay. It's quite. I, w- I did a. I did a Feel science fiction to act. Over. Uh, as a, as a, like a, a Martian doing a stand-up comedy, which caused some problem with the billings, because when they would put up Woody Alien or Steve Martian, <laughs> right. people would misread it, and then they'd be really angry. Oh, would they <laughs> right. get mad and, and they would like, just see, throw yes. tomatoes? That tomatoes. wild and crazy alien yeah. Steve Martian. So how would you, yeah. how would you introduce them? Um... Uh, Can you remember? You know them and love some of them. <laughs> Willio and Filio. No, I, I can't remember. I, I, I did. I tried, it, there was a sort of 1930s feel to it a little bit, right? A little bit. Yes. Of, uh, only because you would sometimes have vaudevillian type acts. Uh, you had uh, uh, Professor Otto Van Palindrome. That's right. Uh, who played the musical Saw. Right. And you, you accompanied him. Yes. On you, you were his interpreter. In yes. Right. Yes. Because uh, we did. He uh, was silent like Teller in Penn, Penn and Teller. Beethoven's Neunte. The symphony. Yes, it was quite stirring. It was pretty fun. And I remember I couldn't believe the melody because it jumps in there. It's early ragtime. You know, that that just knocked me out. So are you saying Beethoven invented ragtime? A little bit of a syncopation there. Yeah, right. He's He was before... Irving Berlin, the king of ragtime, according to Irving Berlin and his publisher, forget about Scott Joplin. But you know there's nothing well, the new king under doesn't the sun, me- right? Pardon there's me? nothing new under the sun. There isn't? No. Oh. That's what the Bible says. Nothing new turn, under turn, the sun. Turn, turn, turn. Yes. Oh, right. Go. And all the royalties go to uh, the estate of... Um, <laughs> Those Hill Sisters Team in Singer. Kentucky. Oh, wait, no. <laughs> Very good. Do you get that? The no. birds of the Happy birthday to, uh, people. But good morning were, to all. Yeah. Oh, oh. Well, Those, you, got, you guys They were basically stuff. racketeers. <laughs> they just shook down the country for a century. Are they the ones that century. wrote Happy Birthday to Well, 
<laughs> wrote. Happy one birthday. of one of them had her name on "Good Morning to All" in in a in a reader that went out to schools Why in the eighties. Oh, by the way, I just want to say thank you to all the patrons who are supporting our show. We didn't really give you a a shout out at this this particular episode but thank you for doing that and uh, and i was just thinking maybe we can put our name on something like that and that could help fund and get like new lights or for the studio another chair maybe wow (laughs) what do you think about that yes one that's maybe you need like a, a a desk and a couch like a, like a like tonight oh, wow. show scenario. Maybe. Oh, yeah, and an orchestra. Ooh, we can do that. would be and fun. The, well, the so hosts what? really have to have chairs that make them uh, Wait, Oh, like and, like ones yeah. that go up and down, have hydraulics, right? Hydraulics. How about explosives? Well, I, think, I think some um, uh, phone Ejection books. Seat. <laughs> Ejection seats. <laughs> trap doors. Trap, trap do- doors. We were talking about yeah. trap doors earlier. Yes, yeah. yeah. whether anyone ever really, truly had one. Uh, but somebody must have well, had a trap door other than a cartoon character. What would, do you think? Were you there? When mm-hmm. Willie Onfilio played the uh, the Palace Theater in Cleveland, yes, um, they opened for Martin Mull. Is that's recall. right? That's right. And the next week he was hosting the Tonight Show. Wow! And, um, and what were you doing the next week? We happened to be in Los Angeles, and in my stupidity, in my naivete, from a phone booth, I called up the Tonight Show office and asked to speak to Martin Mull, who we had just opened two shows for. Uh, to let them know we were in town, and if they if there were any cancellations and they needed an extra guest, <laughs> and what they Willie O'Filio was there. They were very very polite, and and uh, he couldn't be reached. Oh yes, I'm writing it down now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, no, thank the, you. The the, the, <laughs> wom- the woman I spoke to was. Uh, you know, was very nice to this out of towner who didn't understand exactly how, how things, things are work. scheduled and, and so on. Speaking of uh, uh, the uh, famous and wonderful Clevelanders that who both uh, write and are connected with the comic books, Harvey Picar, yeah. I used to love to watch when he would be guest on the Letterman show because he didn't know how the rules worked at all. <laughs> Great. It, he'd be on like it'd be his like third or fourth appearance, and Letterman would say, "You like coming on the show, don't you, Harvey? Like." Uh, we're we're uh, we're friends. You like me, you don't you, uh, Harvey? And he went like you, man. I don't even know you. <laughs> you know, like, right. He didn't really understand how TV works. Where it's like, no, we're all close. That friends. that sounds like something I would say. Unfortunately, yeah. yeah we not. should explain yeah. who Harvey Peacock and explain was. What, how what what your connection with the Letterman show was and who who Letterman who. To enjoy the full episode, please support us at Patreon.com/slash Tell You Later. Thanks a lot. I have yeah. a little um, um, trivial information about Bob Dylan. Really? Mm-hmm. Okay, let's hear it. Okay, Here's I the know, Bob Dylan we episode. We know, I think you might know him too, he used to babysit for Bob Dylan's kids in New York. Not Eddie Gorwich. Mm, who? Tell you later. <laughs> Tell You Later is a Patreon-driven entertainment show. So what are you waiting for? Come on over. Join us at patreon.com front slash tell you later. It's out of count of you That the birds are on the singing And the bells will soon be ringing Well, that was a lot of hot air I'll say Want to see it again? Absolutely All right. I love hot Woo-hoo. air